Good morning class. Today we're going to resume standard SS8H3 which is to analyze the role of Georgia in the American Revolution and we're still in element A which is to explain the immediate and long-term causes of the American Revolution and their impact on Georgia. So yesterday we discussed the French and Indian War or the Seven Years War as it is known over in Europe from 1754 until 1763. So in 1763, just to review, the um, French and Indian War is concluded by the Treaty of Paris. In that same year, the Proclamation of 1763, of course, is established, which establishes a line along the Appalachian Mountains, which says that the colonists cannot settle beyond those mountains. Now, this is the first of many British and parliamentary laws that are going to upset the colonists because it made the colonists who had settled past the Appalachian Mountains come back. This is an agreement that they made with the Indians and the Spanish who had the area outside of the Appalachian Mountains to the west of them. Same year, we get the Treaty of Augusta, which the colony of Georgia, of course, requires more land. And again, the Proclamation of 1763 establishes the border of Georgia, even though they're not allowed to settle out there, all the way over at the Mississippi River. Now, Navigation Acts, the very first act that comes from Parliament to raise taxes, to basically to pay for those wars because at that time England was left in debt for the various different conflicts that they had been in. So the Navigation Acts, it increases the taxes at the, at the ports. Uh, I apologize, not increases, but it enforces, it actually lowers the taxes at the ports, but it makes it where everybody actually has to pay them for the items that are coming in, the imports and the exports, actually coming in and going out. And then the Navigation Acts also stated that the British colonists were only allowed to sell goods um, from British vessels. 1764, of course, you get the Sugar Act, and another word for sugar is molasses. And 1765, you get the Quartering Act that says that these uh, British soldiers were to be taken care of and quartered in the colonist homes. The Stamp Act is also passed in 65, which basically established that a stamp had to be placed on any, um, basically any document, whether it's trading cards or a marriage license or divorce decree or anything of that sort. That same year, you get nine colonies that come together and establish the Stamp Act Congress that send a delegate up to New York to make a declaration to, um, to King George III to basically tell him that the colonists were not happy about these taxes. Well, George actually doesn't send anybody, but nine of the colonies do. So in 1766, the Declaratory Act comes about, which is where the British government says, okay, we are going to repeal the Sugar and Stamp Acts. However, we are declaring that we are in charge and you are going to follow our laws, our regulations, and our rules. So they wanted to establish that with the colonies. So now we're moving into what we have today, the Townshend Acts. The Townshend Acts were passed in 1767, and they were established by a man by the name of Charles Townshend, who became finance minister in 1767. His Townshend Acts tax imported goods such as tea, paper, and paint. Expect, he expected no protest since, tax, since the tax was going to be collected at the port before the final sale. Well, two major problems with this, as we discussed yesterday. Sugar and tea are two of the most important things to the British colonists. Well, now both of them are going to be taxed along with paper and paint. And again, paper, a lot of the things that were being put on paper also had a stamp act that was initially being placed on them. So, it seemed like every time the colonists were turning around, something else was being passed. The Sons of Liberty. Sons of Liberty was a group of people that came together, a, a group of men that came together who started acting out against the British government. They would go to different places like Tandy's Tavern down in Savannah and just raise cane about what was going on and really start to talk about revolution and turning against the British government and all of these things. The Daughters of Liberty rallied colonists to use and weave their own cloth. And this was, again, the Daughters of Liberty, not the Sons of Liberty. But the Sons of Liberty at that time, they pressure merchants to not sell imported items. And again, imported items are items that were coming in to the colony. The colonists boycott British goods 
and Georgia imports from other partners. Now, when you boycott something, that is when you refuse to buy something from a particular group of people, such as um, you go to the Civil Rights Movement when Rosa Parks was in, when when she was arrested for sitting in the front of the bus just because she was tired. Um, she was when that happened. Martin Luther King got several people together and he led the Montgomery bus boycott. And what ends up happening is the Montgomery bus company actually almost goes bankrupt. Well, that's what a lot of times that's the purpose of a boycott is to make it to where either a business is either going to go bankrupt or a business is going to basically start accepting whatever the people want them to accept. In the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s, it was that they wanted equal rights for African Americans. And during this time, the colonists wanted to be treated as equal. They did, as we discussed yesterday, they wanted no taxation without representation. They wanted to be able to tell the parliament in England, look, we're upset about this and we don't like the way things are being done. So again, the colonists boycott British goods and Georgia imports from other partners, which if you remember the Navigation Acts, it's illegal to import from other partners. They are only supposed to be trading with England. So Georgia prepares for independence. Georgia considers their options. Is that their con concerned Georgians think of ways to become more independent. They encourage colonists to make goods themselves and to reduce the imports. So they wanted to reduce the items that they were having to buy from England. They suggest a pledge to decrease dependence on from England and they boycott merchants who don't sign a pledge. So the traders who were bringing in goods, a lot of Georgians and a lot of other colonists were proposing that they boycott these merchants and stop buying things from them, which would in turn make them go bankrupt, which basically means broke. Actions do not force Britain to decrease taxes, and it only escalates conflicts, which just means that the conflicts begin to happen more and more. Um, we're going to move into section three, but that will be on the next presentation.